Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we are looking at the Newmark Party Mix Live. This is a beginner budget controller which is all about fun. Let's get to it. This won't be a very long review. We are mostly talking to professional working DJs here on the channel, and unlike some of Newmark's budget hardware, there isn't really much of a use case for the Party Mix as a supplementary controller for a pro. No, this one is squarely aimed at beginners, and that's all good. Often, saying a product is like a toy is a negative, but in the case of the Party Mix, that's kind of the point. There are two models in the line, the Party Mix 2, which has a street price of $129 in the US, and the one I've tested, the Party Mix Live, at $179. The only real difference is that the Party Mix Live has built-in speakers, which I'll get to. Both devices are built with all plastic construction, as you'd expect at this price, but feel sturdy enough for the money. They're really very compact at just shy of 13 inches wide and around 8 inches deep for the two, with the live a couple of inches deeper to fit the speakers in. They don't feel incredibly spacious just by dint of that small size, but the controls certainly aren't too cramped. We'll get the fundamentals out of the way before getting to the extras. Both devices work with Serato DJ Lite out of the box and are supported by Serato DJ Pro if you have a license for that. They'll also work with Algorithms DJ on both desktop and iOS, although they aren't iOS native devices so you'll need a camera connection kit for that. The mapping with Serato is clean with no weirdness, everything works as expected. You have two band EQ and a combo filter for each deck, as well as a trim control. There are four performance pads, which although are more clicky buttons than actual pads, still respond pretty well. There are four modes for those, hot cue, auto loop, sampler playback and effects, all of which work as expected. It's worth noting that the pad mode button also doubles up as a shift when held for deleting cues or disabling sync. The pitch faders are very short, not unusable, but it's certainly a bit trickier to get to a precise BPM than with the longer pitch faders on, say, a mix track. I'd love to see Serato introduce a plus or minus 4% pitch range to their software to make life easier on shorter faders, as it's really important that beginners have the chance to learn to beat match manually on their hardware without frustration. If you're always having to pitch bend to keep tracks in time because the BPM isn't exactly matched, that can get annoying. The up faders and cross fader are fine, nobody is expecting miracles at a sub $200 price point, but I will say that with Serato's cross fader curve set to its sharpest, you can actually cut reasonably well on the party mix units. That's helped by the jog wheels, which are fairly basic capacitive plastic jobs, but are still nicely responsive. I'd prefer the resistance to be a touch higher when pushing and pulling, but that's personal taste. Both models share the same outputs, 3.5mm stereo jacks for both headphones and master output, and a USB port to connect to your computer. Queuing is fairly basic, with switches for each channel, and you can press both down at once if you like. The older party mix had a cue master blend knob and the new ones don't, but you can adjust that in the software if you want. So we move on to what sets the two Party Mix models apart from each other, and that is the internal speakers on the Party Mix Live. I really like that having those switched on does not disable the master output, so you can have extra speakers facing away from you, say, when using the built-in speakers like monitors. As for the quality of the speakers, well, they are 5 watt, 2 inch drivers in a plastic enclosure. You are not going to be bothering the neighbours, but I rather liked having them. They're certainly up to the job of a little bedroom practice, and not having to faff around with extra connections when you set up is really nice. The sound does start to break up a bit at maximum volume, but I trust that Newmark have set the levels to the point where you shouldn't be able to blow them. Something to bear in mind is that Serato DJ Lite does allow you to feed the master output through your laptop speakers, so if your computer has great speakers already, that might be another reason to forego the extra $50 and just get the Party Mix 2 instead. One actual potential downside is that, unlike the solely USB bus-powered Party Mix 2, the Party Mix Live does require the use of the included 12-volt power supply, even when the internal speakers are switched off. So ultimately, the choice between the two models might really depend on how you see yourself using the device. Indoors, the Live is fantastic, but if you want to sit in your garden at something like a family barbecue, you'd probably be better off with the Party Mix 2 and a battery-powered speaker, as with your laptop also on battery, you're then fully portable. And so we turn to the lights, or as Newmark rather amusingly call them, the party balls, as found on both units. And to be honest, I was surprised how much I liked them. They aren't the brightest things in the world, but the spread of light is remarkably good, and they offer a selection of patterns linked up to the BPM of your tracks. I found that having the unit three to four feet away from a wall offers the best balance between brightness and spread, and there's just no doubt that they add a bit of fun to proceedings. And that's my overall takeaway from the Party Mix controllers. They're all about fun. 
fun. And for a kid or an absolute beginner who wants to just try out DJing for the very first time, fun is the most important factor. For someone who's already decided that they're serious about getting into DJing, I'd suggest trying to spend a little more and getting something like Newmark's mix track line, as they have longer pitch faders and RCA connections, things like that. But for someone who just wants to give DJing a try and spend a minimal amount on a hobby they aren't sure they're going to love, then the Party Mix 2 and Party Mix Live will, I'm sure, bring them plenty of joy. So there you go, my take on the Party Mix Live and by extension the Party Mix 2, same thing, just no speakers. I keep coming back to the fun aspect of these and that's because that's really what they're all about. These are like toys and that is not an insult. That is a compliment to these devices. All of the stuff that I review here, it goes to my house first and I'll normally unbox it and have a little play and my kids who are quite young could not care less. As a rule, they're not into DJing. They don't want to be DJs like they might do when they're older, but right now they couldn't care less. But this thing, I pulled it out, plugged it into the laptop, the speakers are blaring, the lights are flashing, and my five-year-old was all over it. Because it is just a little party in a box. It gives you that kind of DJ feeling from a very affordable, very compact, very easy to use device. So I think these are fantastic for their intended market. Yeah, it's not a device that you're gonna take with you throughout your DJ career. This is the kind of thing you'll get when you first start DJing, and then you'll move on to something else. But yeah, fundamentally, as a fun toy to give you an essence, a flavor of DJing, these are very successful devices indeed. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.